Hi everyone, this is a vacuum switcher. It hooks up to my shop vac and quickly switches between all the different tools in my garage that require dust collection. So this design was inspired by other designs I've seen on social media. It doesn't actually divide the suction to all the tools at once. It switches the suction to the, only the tool that I'm currently using that requires dust collection. So the switcher was designed in Fusion 360 and milled on an Avon CNC out of Baltic birch plywood. I'm gonna post the plans on my website if you'd like to build one, and I'll leave that link in the description below. Okay, so how well does the switcher work? And more importantly, is there any loss of suction? So here goes the first test. This is with the switcher on. This will be connected to the shop vac, and we're gonna time to see how long it takes to suck up all of this sawdust. Not bad. Not the most scientific of tests, but it'll work. Same test, same amount of sawdust, but this time the hose is coming directly out of the shop vac. So the first time was about 12 seconds, maybe 13 seconds. And, uh, and we're only off probably about like a fraction of a second to one second. So it's not a completely scientific test, but you can see that there's no significant loss of suction. So this is a cross section of what makes up the vacuum switcher. In each one of these areas or, or valves, there's five of these parts that are all glued together. And then this top cap part, there's five of these. The reason why you don't see a lot of suction loss is because the fit of these is so tight and so precise that there really isn't a whole lot of space for the air to escape out of. So now that we know it works, let's start building it. The vacuum switcher is a modular design made up of these individual valve pieces. They fit together similar to how Lego works. These studs actually fit into these holes and aligns all the pieces like that. They need to be properly aligned so the top cap piece can slide smoothly across all the different valves. These holes right here are for a long threaded rod that goes through all of the valve pieces and can be tightened to hold them together really snugly. Snugly? So let's assemble one of these valve pieces. We have two dowels that have been cut the exact same length as one of the valves. We're gonna offset these dowels in all the cross sections so that we get a stud on one side and a hole on the other. And then we have five of the cross sections of the valves. These dowels were designed to essentially line up all of the cross sections so that they fit together really well and then there's no mistakes when we glue them together, which would cause ridges, which would in turn slow down the, uh, the cap piece sliding back and forth. So they all fit on like this, uh, eventually with glue. And that would turn into our valve piece, minus the, the hole that we need right there. So how are we gonna cut this hole into our valve piece? You could use one of these, and that should work really well, as long as you matched this to the size of your dust collection hose. But what we're gonna do is we built these jigs that will actually hold the valve piece to our CNC table, nice and straight. And we're gonna set up our CNC to actually cut the hole for us. These little jigs are uh, pretty easy to make and the plans for these are actually included in the plans for the vacuum switcher that will be online.
When assembling the top sliding piece that goes across the valves, we're going to use the valve as a jig. But first we're going to use some inexpensive smooth packing tape to cover the valve so that the, the sliding pieces don't stick to the jig when they're glued. So now the sliding pieces can easily go over the jig. We can start assembling them and glue them together. You can see here how we added a few clamps and the jig is keeping the top sliding pieces together and aligned. Now we just need to wait for it to dry. It's obviously going to need some sanding to get some of this extra glue off, but you can see it's aligned pretty well. So after some cleanup and some sanding, you can see we have the cap piece and the valve piece, and they fit together pretty well. You can see that there's not a lot of tolerance here for air to escape. And once we get some paste wax on this, it will actually slide back and forth very easily. Now we need a hole here similar to the hole that we drilled in the valve piece. So again, we're going to use the valve piece as a jig on our CNC and run the same similar hole cutting program to cut the hole in the top cap piece. So again, you don't need to use a CNC machine to, to cut this hole. You could easily use a hole saw to do pretty much the exact same operation. So the hoses that I'm using with the vacuum switcher are the standard rigid shop vac hoses that you can get at major big box stores like Home Depot. I've actually cut off a piece of the male end and I'm going to epoxy it into the sliding cap piece so that it, it's permanent and it will always stay there. Then this hose will connect to the shop vac while all the other tool hoses will press fit into the valves like that. This is what the top sliding piece looks like with the dust collection hose epoxied into the hole. And I received some really great feedback from people on Instagram saying I should put magnets in to both uh, the sliding piece and the valves so it properly registers right over the hole. So I'm gonna do that now with some epoxy and some neodymium magnets I purchased off Amazon. So the magnet idea worked out really well. Thanks to everyone who left this idea in the comments. These are the left and right bracket pieces that hold the valve pieces together and allow you to mount the switcher to a wall or work workbench. They are made up of two pieces, this piece and that piece, that are glued and screwed together. This top piece is designed for bolts to fit through so you can securely mount it to a wall or a workbench. The key differences between the two is that one has studs to fit into the studs of a valve piece, and the other has holes, which accept, accepts the studs from the last valve piece in the row. 
Now again, because this is a modular design, you can add or subtract as, as many of these valve pieces as you would like or need. And they all fit through just like Lego pieces, keeping the valves together. I normally have about six valve pieces on my vacuum switcher. And this is an example of the threaded rods that fit through these holes. You essentially want to cut these to size depending on how wide your vacuum switcher is. Then put some nuts on each side uh, and possibly some washers. And then just tighten it down so it's snug and all the pieces are fit together and you should be good to go. So one of the last steps that you want to do to complete the vacuum switch is to add paste wax. This will make the top hatch piece glide really easily across the entire vacuum switcher. So that's it. Here's the completed vacuum switcher. If you're interested in building one for yourself, uh, again, there'll be a link to the plans down in the description. And thanks everyone for watching.